Welcome to ATCM. Today we are going to discuss a case about a young male who came to here with complaints of acute onset of breathlessness. Shall begin. A 38 year old male was brought to here with complaints of acute onset of breathing difficulties in the past 30 minutes. A bit into the background. So basically he woke up that day morning and he found actually a small insect lying on the bed. But actually he noticed to have some itching over his back of the neck and about one hour back. But since then he has been progressively having some itching all over the body and he started noticing some rashes all over the body. But since the past 30 minutes he started developing some mild breathing difficulty so he came to the hospital. Okay. So initial tensor cases when he was conscious or in obeying to my command so he went to the primary survey. So he was able to like talk in full sentences but he was having some mild hoarseness of voice but not significant. There was no signs of any obvious angioedema. There was no swelling of any lips, no swollen swell nebula, nothing was noted. But he was having some mild hoarseness in the voice but he was able to talk in full sentences. Uh, breathing part, he had a respiratory rate of 20, 30 per minute but saturation was 98% in room air. And on auscultation, he had bilateral rocky. Your respiratory rate was? 30, 30. Zero. Okay. 30 to 32 like that and <coughs> bilaterally he had a wrong on auscultation but with equal air entry and at this point I advise to start on ablations with duolin and continue by uh, survey. Uh, circulatory part uh, he had a heart rate of 92 per minute and blood pressure was 110 by uh, 80 millimeters of mercury and this time we uh, also put a two large IV bore candle of 18 gauge and continue the survey. Disability part had a full score of GCS and exposure party was febrile on arrival but we noticed to have articular rashes all over the body and also some uh, uh, redness was noted on the back of the neck and we, but we couldn't notice any obvious stings or any insect stings on the back. Uh, so we examined the body we couldn't find any other stings or anything but uh, rashes were there all over the body. So, <coughs> uh, this was a primary survey so reassessment. From this uh, uh, what all can be the diagnosis? Uh, one thing is actually he came with complaints of extensive rashes with an acute onset so it mm -hmm. could be an acute allergic reaction. Okay. Uh, second it is some problem maybe some insect bite or something else. Mm -hmm. So any an acute allergic reaction. Uh, second history uh, basically he But he is having some hoarseness and also uh, can it be just an allergy or? So it could be like an impending or early angioedema also. Okay. Mm -hmm. Though clinically we couldn't find any obvious swelling but it could be like an impending angioedema. Mm. Mm. Causing respiratory, respiratory obstruction. obstruction and he was tachypneic and mm. uh, some voice change was also there. Mm. Okay, okay. He so, was bronchial asthma patient and had a history of allergy so it's not necessarily insect bite. Mm. He could have had it from food allergy or maybe any antibiotics or drug exposure or anything of that sort. So exacerbation of asthma also. Mm. So reassessment of the primary survey now his airway is actually still almost same only. Uh, there was no any worsening of symptoms. Uh, breathing part his uh, chest is almost clearing and his respiratory rate is almost coming to 28, 24, 28 like that. Uh, Nebulization is ongoing and BP is still maintaining heart rate is around uh, 86 at this point. So we went to the primary secondary survey. Uh, in this mm. patient along with the adjuncts we should arrange the uh, airway equipments also mm. because he was having some voice change, he was tachypneic. So mm. anytime he might require uh, intubation. Mm -hmm. So airway equipments should be kept ready mm. and uh, the tube size should be selected accordingly. So oh, any comments on the tube size if at all? <coughs> uh, thing is actually if the patient is going into full blown angioedema we have to like go for a smaller size tube. Yes. So when we, even though we are uh, uh, arranging for corresponding to the age we have to always arrange a few sizes less of smaller size also like for this PC almost like a moderately well built guy so we can arrange for like an 8 size tube but we also arrange for 7.5, 7 and 6.5 also okay. in case he worsens into acute respiratory distress. Okay. Plus it's going to be a difficult intubation let's just say if the patient develops an laryngeal edema so uh, laryngeal airway, supraglottic airway has to be kept. Uh, also arranged. Mm. So any point we are seeing like a like worsening of symptoms we have to like arrange for early intubation like that. So in the reassessment part airway like uh, appears to be almost the same as on arrival but breathing part is slowly improving with the <coughs> coming down of respiratory rate and chest almost clearing and so we went to the secondary survey. So in detail basically uh, he had acute onset of rashes all over the body uh, since past one hour and since past 30 minutes he is having to have some mild breathing difficulty which progressed over time. So which brought me to the hospital. There was no history of any like any like any um, out of normal food intake or anything in the recent uh, past two days and also there was no history of any drug intake or anything. There was no history of any fever, no chest pain, no obvious palpitation as such. There was no drooling of saliva. There was no history of any altered sensorium or any syncope. There was, there was no complaints of any abdominal pain, vomiting or loose tools.
Okay. So, so can you comment about some precipitating factors for uh, okay. anaphylaxis? So basically, uh, the common factors are like uh, if the patient is having previously not, it will be like food. Mm. Uh, it could be like uh, nuts or milk or maybe red meat products like that. Uh, especially in this patient, he had a previous history of allergy to uh, red meat, okay. mainly to meat and this thing, uh, beef and mutton. He had allergy in the past also. And some people may have allergic to uh, drug allergy to uh, drugs also. Uh, mainly like penicillin compounds like beta lactam antibodies and everything. The patient may have allergies. And some may have like other allergies like any uh, drug allergy to the dust, mold, maybe some insect bite like that. So two things with this patient is a non-asthmatic patient and also had a previous meat allergic history is also there. And also he noticed an insect on his bed. So it could be secondary to an insect bite or maybe some food or anything. Exposure to meat. Exposure to meat. Like mm. So anyway, uh, that is the history. So he's a not allergic to meat history is there and also he's... He had history of childhood asthma. Mm. At that time, he was on regular medications, but now he is only taking SOS on basis of with Astel and MDA, but not on any regular medication. Okay. Uh, you were um, telling about there was no history of any abdominal pain, loss of conscience, syncope, and all. Mm. Why is that important? I uh, think is uh, sometimes anaphylaxis can precipitate like any other symptoms also, like mm. GA symptoms, like abdominal cramping, uh, maybe like loose stools, vomiting like that, and also it can even precipitate like headache, seizure, and all that in rare cases. Okay difference between allergic reaction and anaphylaxis only if a patient has a hemodynamic instability will label the patient as anaphylaxis otherwise it can be just an allergic reaction so urticarial rashes with or with, uh, uh, hypotension with or without uh, urticarial rash becomes anaphylaxis but if there is no hypotension no hemodynamic instability then it is just an allergic reaction no if there is hypotension then it is anaphylactic mm -hmm. shock anaphylactic shock and if if this patient is having some articular lesions along with the mm, other findings like component. respiratory component or any other organ manifestations like any GA, uh, mm. GA thing or mm. any other any things. So or... then only the patient will meet the criteria for anaphylaxis. Mm. If along with hypotension it will be anaphylactic shock. Mm. Okay, uh, so uh, can you tell the criteria to diagnose so anaphylaxis? So criteria basically there should be like a, if we have a history of like any stimuli which can co uh, causing this uh, incident along with that uh, it will be there should be involvement of two systems okay uh, so the most common we find will be like generalized skin involvement it could be like uh, articular lesions or maybe like angioedema swelling of lips uh, eyelids uh, uvula and all that lips and all that so one is skin involvement secondary along with that there may be involvement of uh, any respiratory or cardio uh, this thing cardiac com compromise oh. the patient may having progressive uh, respiratory distress or maybe come with hypoxia or like symptoms like that and, or maybe the patient may be coming with bradycardia or hypotension so any uh, skin involvement with respiratory or cardiac involvement we can put it as anaphylaxis or if the patient is not that symptomatic then we can go for like two minor criteria. again any of the positive symptoms may be like involving the uh, ear nose throat or maybe skin involvement along with GI symptoms uh, skin symptoms like any uh, headache persistent headache uh, like nausea and all that we can again term like anaphylaxis if it is progressive in nature and once the patient is going into hemodynamic instability, we call it anaphylactic shock, mm. which is more like a distributive shock nature. Yes. So this patient, that is the secondary survey. Uh, so he came uh, on, on arrival. He was about his last meal was about four hours before coming to the hospital, and the only event noted was the uh, beetle found on the bed. So clinical examination, he is a moderately built health guy, uh, conscious and oriented. And now the, after coming here, actually we. We put an IV line and we gave him initially uh, hydrocortisone 200 milligram was given along with IV line and and after that his uh, rashes were actually uh, itching was comparatively getting reduced and his wheeze is also coming down after starting the nebulizations uh, but uh, his respiratory rate was slowly like getting worse and like about 36 it became and also his BP everything is maintaining but in view of his worsening symptoms actually we also had to give him uh, injection adrenal mm -hmm. and then 0.5 milligram was given as IM or the lateral aspect of thigh. Mm. So, so when okay. we check this patient, we should check from airway breathing circulation. Mm. At present, his airway is patent. Only mm. thing is that because of the bron mm. uh, bronchospasm, he is tachypneic. Mm. Uh, so uh, for that, we have anyway given nebulization. Mm. But initially itself, we, uh, anyway, he meets the criteria to get adrenaline mm. because he is having generalized rashes. He is mm. having some manifestations of also, organ so dysfunction. So he is in anaphylaxis. Mm. So first line of management is adrenaline. adrenaline. And airway also should be taken care of mm. if at all required. Mm. Okay. 
So this patient we gave adrenaline 0.5 IM was given along mm. with hydrocortisone, Avil and Bandac. Mm. Hydrocortisone 200 mg was given and Avil 22.75 member was given and Bandac 50 mg was given as IV. And <coughs> uh, at all times his hemodynamics was maintaining his blood pressure, BP, everything was maintaining. So we didn't start him on IV fluids at this point. Okay. So <coughs> respiratory part is VC is improving. Uh, BP is now around 120-70 and heart rate is around uh, 98 uh, beats per minute. Abdomen Suppose is, if we are not having an nebulizer, what, mm. what else can we do? Uh, if he is actually regularly using the, the inhaler which he regularly uses is with him, we can actually ask him to take uh, about four times the number of the puffs which he should Around four to six eight. puffs can be mm. taken. Can like be taken. salbutamol if it is he is having, he mm. can take that puff. Mm. Okay. So <coughs> So there was a history. Uh, so after giving this adrenaline and our nebulizations, the patient clinically improved. Uh, but we admitted him anyway for observation because of his history of asthma and previous history of allergy. Mm. Because we were actually uh, one thing is we have to like monitor him for any biphasic reaction, mm. which cannot. We uh, initially so we are not sure what is the triggering factor for mm. this. So we don't know after some time this patient will again have the same manifestation. So mm. we need to admit him and then observe mm. whether he is developing these symptoms again. Mm. Okay. So he was admitted for further evaluation but post admission he didn't have any episodes except for some uh, intermittent breathing difficulty and V's. But thing is actually we could not differentiate whether it was secondary to any al uh, secondary al al allergy reaction or maybe he's already persisting asthma also. Okay. So anyway we put him on continuous stabilizations and our asthma regular management. And after that he didn't have any worsening of symptoms. There was no worsening of any like uh, hoarseness of voice or any airway features or anything. So he was clinically maintaining like that. Okay. So this patient we didn't do any extensive investigation as such, except for a uh, like a like basic blood count without any acute infection as such, and count the inflammatory markers with the normal limits only. The so CRP was only 2.3 like that. So he was not having any acute infection at this point. Mm. So there is uh, nothing to precipitate a, mm. a, a bacterial exacerbation or a viral exacerbation of asthma, mm. uh, but maybe an allergic reaction. Mm. Okay. Might have caused this. So by the second day, he was maintaining hemodynamically okay. His symptoms have improved, and his rashes have slowly come down. And coming from uh, considering the uh, first day, almost fifty percent, more than fifty percent has come down, and he's okay. hemodynamically stable right now. Okay. So that's the case. Okay. So uh, can you just explain how uh, how to manage anaphylaxis? <clears throat> One thing, like any patient in ED, if you're coming with a history of uh, like an acute uh, in, like if there is a non-allergic case, case with, a, with an acute exposure, we have to treat him like with an, a bit more concern like mm. uh, than the other patient. So any patient we will be going with ABCD. Mm. So we will assess the airway for any acute chances of any obstruction. Mm. So we will be looking uh, looking at the oral pharynx for any uh, obvious swellings, any features of angiodema, any retropharyngeal swelling, any uvulas or, or anything like that. And also we talk to the patient. If the patient is able to talk in his normal tone and rate, we can actually rule out any acute Airway obstruction. Uh, airway obstruction at the presentation itself. Then in the uh, we had to check from head to toe because then the respiratory they, we had to look for any V's or any uh, features of any obstruction like that. And also any not uh, audible stride or anything we have to rule out. Then again uh, this kind of patients actually can also have features of uh, hemodynamic instability in the early stage itself. So we have to like uh, con uh, even if the initial uh, um, dynamics are negative, we have to continuously monitor for any further we will drop in uh, this thing, uh, heart rate or BP. So A, B and C. So at any point he is meeting the criteria of anaphylaxis, we are intervening immediately as possible with adrenaline itself. Okay. So the adrenaline dosing will be like any person who is above 50 kg of weight, we can give 0.5 milligram of I, uh, IM adrenaline, uh, preferably over the uh, lateral aspect of thigh. If uh, it is a child? Uh, if again, if the, it's a, like a Adult with a, like a lesser weight, like about less than between 25 to 50, we go for 0.3. Or even if it's like a bigger child, we go mm. for 0.3 mm, which we even get as a P pen or we can give in the ED. If it's again less than 25, but about 10 kg, we can go for 0.15. Okay. So that is the dose for children. But if it's again a child even less than that, we have to like, according to the dose, we have a weight according to we can calculate and give. So that will be for children to adult. 0 0.15, 0 0.3 and 0 0.5. So this patient we opted for 0 0.5. 0 0.5. Mm. And again with that, uh, we have to support the other parameters. Like if the patient is having acute desaturation, we have to give him supplementary oxygenation. And if he's in a hypertensive state, we can give fluid bonuses at uh, 10 to 20 ml per kg. Mm. And in adults, we can preferably go for 20 ml per kg. Mm. And again, 
uh, we can give up to one to two liters of bolus and see the response except in cases of any previous cardiac history like that and also if we can if at all this patient is remaining in hypertension after fluid bolus what will you do ah uh, if the patient is not responding to our initial and tell we can even repeat the dose every 5 uh, to 10 minutes mm. but even after two three doses if it is not improving we can go for a trial of iv one bolus can be given mm. so we opt for how to give iv adrenaline ah uh, so basically we take a 1 in 1000 that is some of the common uh, this dose we get preparation we get and we dilute it in uh, uh, 10 ml so one ambulus 1 mg 1 ml 1 mg 1 ml, oh. 1 ml. Hmm. we dilute it to 10 ml hmm. so if we uh, take 1 ml of that uh, we will be getting uh, this thing 100 microgram okay which we again dilute in 10 ml and we give as a slow infusion over 5 to 10 minutes hmm. and we see the response If he is not responding to this again, uh, we have to uh, at this point we have to continuously monitor the hemodynamics also. In time we can throw up an arrhythmia. So even with this inf- uh, uh, bolus is not responding, we have to start him on an IV infusion, mm. and we can start at the rate of one microgram per minute. We can start as a slow infusion, uh, which we use uh, prepare by mixing one milligram of again one in thousand in a five hundred ns bottle and infuse at the starting rate of zero point five ml per minute. Okay. So at this rate we can uh, start at the entire according to the patient's response. and once the patient starts improving we can actually uh, again reduce the dose or maybe even stop also especially in case of uh, patients who are actually have on blo- uh, beta blockers or anything this also may not work then we have to think about giving glucagon also in these okay. patients so what are the other drugs which we will give anaphylaxis uh, you told about hydrocortisone mm. so what is the maximum dose of hydrocortisone that can be given uh, so as per recommended we can give up to 500 mg in uh, allergy reaction mm. the recommended dose is like 250 to 500 mg as an iv bolus which can for be for adults, adults. for children uh, children actually we have different dosing according to the age and size mm. so that will be like uh, if the child is between like um, more than 12 years of age we can give hydrocortisone 200 mg as the maximum dose and If it is between six to twelve, we can give a uh, hundred. Hundred. Then again, between uh, like uh, this thing. Less than six. Less years. than six years, we give fifty. Again, less than six months, we give twenty-five. Twenty-five. Yeah. So that will be the uh, thing. Then along with that, we can give an H one plus an H two blocker. Preferably, H one is enough. But in cases of persistent or uh, like uh, still symptomatic, we can also add an H two blocker also. But not in case of uh, adult or uh, um, elderly patients. So if it is say like a young or like a children, we can add both H1 and H2 blockers. H1 will be like uh, we can give, um, which we commonly available is Avil injection. We can give which fentanyl and maliate, okay. uh, which we can give as in a slow IV, like over one to two minutes, uh, followed by an H2 blocker like Rantadin can be given, 50 milligram can be given. This again in children actually the dose will again come down. The dose will be 0.5 milligram per kilogram. You can try to according to the body weight and give. So, <coughs> that is the basic management and all that. Uh, so, salbutamol so, nebulization and all. If we are taking, how much milligram should we take? Salbutamol uh, actually, if it is plain salbutamol, we can give five milligram. Mm. Can be taken. Two point five to five. Two point five to five. Give. We can dilute with about two point five milligram, and we can give either as back to back nebulizations, like about three in a cycle, or we can give intermittent nebulizations. Mm. If you are going for uh, combinations like a dual, which is a combination of uh, ipratropin bromide plus uh, liver salbutamol, we can give intermittent nebulizations also, or we can repeat every twenty minutes, uh, like uh, three back to back. So that will be the treatment plan. Uh, so this patient actually didn't go to that uh, like the really bad stage. So we're able to resuscitate him in the also early stages. Also in anaphylaxis, so. but didn't go into anaphylactic. Yeah, shock. in the shock. Uh, so like that, he was resuscitated, and now he's in a post-admitted state early. He's improving right now. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Thank you.